because they haven't had the big multinationals who do not want to recognize that these people even exist. New Zealand have rights to this land and basically taking land and putting unsustainable monocultures, destroying the environment um, and, and displacing um, these communities. Welcome to the Rising Lioness podcast on All About Animals Radio, a place dedicated to animals and all those who act to protect and advocate for them. Hi, I'm your host, Erica Salvamini, and I'm thrilled and honored to be here representing All About Animals Radio using my voice for the animals. Thank you for joining us for what intends to be a thought-provoking and soul-inspiring series where we discuss topics aimed at understanding the importance of the relationship between empathy, animal rights, and our peaceful coexistence with the animal kingdom. And now, on to our show. Hello and welcome. Empowering communities and saving endangered species is what we're here to discuss today with our esteemed guest, Leif Cox. Leif is the founder of Wildlife Conservation International, Under that organization's umbrella, Leif has also founded Wildlife Asia, International Elephant Project, International Tiger Project, and most recently, Forest for People, which is what we're here to discuss today. Leif is also vice president of the Orang Bhutan Republic Foundation. Um, He began his career as a zookeeper, curator, and small population biologist. Leif has worked hands-on with orangutans for more than 30 years. He is highly regarded as a world-renowned expert on orangutans, having published seven, uh, several books, authoring um, a couple of them named Finding Our Humanity and Orangutans, My Cousins, My Friends. In 2019, Lake was awarded the Order of Australian Medal from the Australian government and his university's highest award, the John Curtin Medal for his dedication to species conservation. Welcome, Leaf. Thank you so much for joining us again to discuss Forest for People, which supports indigenous communities in Southeast Asia. Thank you. For folks who missed our last podcast together, please have a listen. In that episode, Leif and I discussed the International Tiger Project. Today, we're going to discuss the indigenous people who have lived in harmony with Indonesia's jungles and nature for centuries and are now losing their homeland along with the wildlife there, all at an alarming rate. And these forests are being taken over, exploited and destroyed all in the name of profit. And Leif, I was hoping that you could share with our audience what is happening to these rainforest communities and why you started this project. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the intention of um, Wildlife Conservation International has always been to bring all species and the biodiversity under an umbrella of holistic conservation and bring everyone through this extinction crisis. However, we found that there was a few species falling outside the umbrella and humanity was one of them, um, and particularly the indigenous communities. The, the rainforest in Asia has never been empty. It's always been, um, you know, for centuries, full of indigenous communities who have been living in a sustainable way. And there's two kinds of communities. There's a slash remote agricultural communities that they'll cut a bit of forest down, burn it to get the nutrients in the soil because rainforest soil is surprisingly poor in quality. And they will farm that soil for about three years until the nutrients are depleted and then move on. Now, by the time they get back to these forest patches, then it's regenerated um, by the rainforest ecosystems. And so, again, it's totally sustainable. Or like the orang rimba, the hunter-gatherers, nomadics, um, you know, hunter and gathering through the rainforest. Now, these systems, which are totally sustainable, have worked for centuries because they haven't had the big multinationals who do not want to recognise that these people even exist. New Zealand have rights to this land and basically taking the land and putting unsustainable monocultures, destroying the environment, um, and, and displacing um, these communities. And so what we often find is there's communities which are malnourished, trying to survive, now destroying the remaining rainforest because their systems of agriculture are unsustainable. 
and have massive human wildlife conflict. And the elephants and tigers, for as two examples, are also trying to survive in these small patches of rainforest. So our goal with Frost for People is to prevent the human elephant conflict between the living beings trying to survive in the remaining patches of forest and develop new agricultural systems under the rainforest canopy in indigenous communities so they can once again be sustainable and not only um, um, be sustainable in the way of being custodians of the environment, but for them to become prosperous and rich because them being well educated and prosperous are the keys to long-term security of these ecosystems. Well, it all is connected, isn't it? And it all, it all matters. So it makes sense that you want to protect the people that obviously need protecting. And you know, it goes back to being a voice for the voiceless and someone speaking up and, and, and standing standing up for them which is, I guess, what your project is doing, which I think is amazing and I applaud. Um, your grassroots project works to protect the forests, the people and the wildlife that depend on them. And I was wondering if you could first tell us about the Forest Community School Food Program within mm -hmm. this project. What, is that, what does that entail? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the, there's different aspects of, of working with indigenous communities to um, support them. Um, one is, is, is women's rights is, is extremely important and critical to these um, issues and the solutions which we can discuss about. The other one is developing new agricultural systems which we just touched on briefly. The, the, the third aspect is looking after the children and you know, before we started working um, with the Talamala community in the Book of Tikkipula ecosystem, they didn't name their children until six years old because they probably wouldn't survive. Maybe just getting attached to them. Mm. Now they name them at birth. And um, we, we feed the children two meals a day and we educate them and provide not only the primary school education in the village, but then scholarships for high school and university education. So they prosper. Now, there's a couple of things that happen here. Um, one is the community has less kids. Ironically, people don't understand this. If you provide, and we also have funded a midwife in the village, so if we allow the infant mortality to reduce to almost zero, people actually have less kids because you have to be very conservative to have enough kids to survive, to support you in your old age. So if you're confident now that your kids will survive, you have less kids. Now, and also if they're well educated, they may also choose to go off and live in the city and, you know, and become doctors, lawyers, engineers, you know, and, and, and live a different sort of life. So it reduces the pressure on the environment. But lastly, education and empowerment through prosperity, wealth prosperity, means that in the future, there will not be the, the um, hidden people that just get pushed over and overlooked by the large multinationals. And in the end, we believe this is going to be the best security for these ecosystems in the long run. Sure, protect the people, you'll protect the rainforest and protect the wildlife. Um, can you tell us about the goal of the mobile education unit? Mm -hmm. we, we, we fund these education units that go around to um, all the, the local communities surrounding key rainforest ecosystems we're, we're trying to survive. There's a couple of aspects to it. Um, we understand through the education system that our values are, very, are set very early in life, below five years of age. And after that, it's a lot harder to change those value systems. So if we can connect young children to the environment, animals very much earlier on, um, that is going to make our life so much easier in, in the long run. And surprisingly, before we started, um, Indonesian school children knew more about African wildlife than their own, because that's what the, you know the, the the books you know that would have you know talking about lions and you know um, and giraffe and not understand the majesty and the beauty of their own wildlife. Also, it helps um, you know um, to start the progress of reducing human wildlife um, conflict. And so the mobile education unit not only um, help um, 
we see um, um, developing values and connection with the, um, um, with the environment and understanding intellectually the value of the environment, for example, supporting uh, environmental services to mitigate floods, um, stop droughts, reducing temperatures, reducing pests, so all the benefits that th they will see later on in life by securing the rainforest um, ecosystems, but also um, help support their overall education so they become affluent and more powerful into the future. That's great. And what is regenerative agriculture and how does this help provide ongoing food security and sustainable income? Mm -hmm. Now, we've been doing it for several years. We've been developing um, uh, agricultural ecosystems under the rainforest canopy to allow the community to financially prosper. An example of this is jungle rubber, shade coffee, shade cocoa, vanilla, um, honey production, as just several examples of the eclectic mix of um, cash crops that the, um, the people can use. But what we found out is they were still wanting to cut forests down for, um, to grow their own food. Because remember, if you're at the bottom of society, exported from others, and have very little financial opportunity, your security, your family, is psychologically based on your ability to grow your own food. This is important for you, not just getting cash to buy food, because that can change very quickly, and that's their experience. And so we, we now then um, looking at, go, okay, we need this extra string in our bow to, to bring these communities on. Now, as I mentioned, is culturally, they've had a sustainable system for centuries. But now we have to introduce a new system called regenerative agriculture, where around their village, they can grow all their food for food security um, through regenerating the soil and developing yeah, um, multifaceted uh, agricultural um, cropping um, to make it totally sustainable in the same area so they don't have to keep moving agricultural systems through the, the, the rainforest. And, of course, this takes time. That's all human beings. Um, we, we, we adapt predominantly. It's the same as orangutans and elephants, as other examples of intelligent beings. We predominantly adapt to the environment through culture. So we have to work with the community um, through their systems um, to develop and move the, sensitively move the culture along. Yeah? Um, and while still empowering them, um, to develop to these new regenerative agricultural systems, which um, we're, um, we're taking from other examples in Africa where it's been successful and, and transplanting those into the Asian rainforest ecosystem. Hmm. Wonderful. So I understand that the Forest for People project also has university scholarships for Indonesian students. What what is the focus of those scholarships? Mm -hmm. Those scholarships is, is to provide the opportunity for young Indonesians to study things like environmental science, rainforest conservation, species conservation. Um, and, so, and so they can become the, the stewards, you know, and, and, the, and, the, um, and the intellectual um, bastions of the holistic conservation which is needed to um, continue on into the future. And, and so that's what those scholarships are predominantly about, as, as well as obviously directly helping, helping um, those individuals um, to become prosperous and successful in their own lives. I love that. I think that's wonderful. And you're empowering graduates to make positive change and be strong advocates for the conservation of Indonesia's rainforests. And do you get, is that all um, paid for by the, the funding of from donors, big donors, small donors? Um, have, have, mm. have you been able to give any of those scholarships out yet? Have you had any graduates? Oh, yes, yes, there's been many. Because remember, um, and it may be true in many other places around the world, 
a lot of educational university systems are funded and supported by big businesses. So you know, university graduates who come out with really obscure ideas about sustainability because they're influenced by people funding the, the government and the education system. So they know how to destroy a rainforest and, and maximum production of a palm oil plantation until it destroys the environment from which it is grown. They, you know, they're the easy uh, access education for those sorts of destructive industries and also the propaganda which is, which is due. And so we have the opportunity through people providing donations to us to provide um, um, graduates with education and, and, um, and research into um, real science-based education that will not only help them to become prosperous and successful, but contribute to long-term sustainability of, of, of their communities. That's wonderful. I love that. Folks, if you want to support vulnerable forest-dwelling communities, a donation to Forests for People provides a win-win solution for both Indigenous communities and for the environment. So basically addressing the humanitarian issues impacting indigenous communities will in the long run support this holistic vision for a sustainable future, won't it? Where all species can thrive and live harmoniously, which is a beautiful thing. And it's basically, you know, at the foundation of everything that we talk about here at All About Animals Radio. And if you want to find out more about Forest for People and how you can make a donation, please visit www.forests or that's the number four, people.org. Is that correct? Did I get that right? Yeah, that, that's correct. It's wonderful. Thank you. Great. And we'll also put everything, all this information, all the links on our profile page for anybody who wants to help earn more or and or donate. And doing this today helps create a better world for all of us. So folks listening, I hope you'll, you'll join us and helping make a difference for the world, for all of us and for wildlife. Leif, thank you once again for all that you do um, and for the, the good work at Wildlife Conservation International, everything you all do every day to create a better world for everyone. Um, I'm very grateful and I wish you and all your endeavors much love, light, and success for the greater good of all. Thank you so very much. Thank you. Thank you all for joining us here today. Please log on to All About Animals Radio podcast, which can be found on all the major platforms, as well as All About Animals Radio YouTube channel. You can listen, watch, like, subscribe, and share. Doing this supports the animals and the people who advocate for them, like Leif and all of his good people working under him and with him. And this ensures that this work can continue. So thank you all. And until next time, namaste. Thank you. This has been Erica Salvamini for the Rising Lioness podcast on All About Animals Radio. A special thank you to Chris Corley for generously lending us his song, Zero Gravity, for the Rising Lioness podcast theme. Please, Take a moment to write a review for our show as it helps others to find us. Please also support our guests and their work, All About Animals Radio, and our social networks. Doing this further supports the animals and their advocates too, thereby making you an Animal Kingdom warrior also. You can find our links on the Rising Lioness podcast page. Until next time, in the words of Sharon Nunez, Animal Equality President, remember this. The small actions of one passionate individual can create a butterfly effect leading to a movement that has the power to change the world. Please use your voice for the animals today.